Hey, what's up guys and welcome back to Ask NK. Today we're taking a look at Blender MoGraph Toolbox and this is made available by Southern Shorty and this amazing tool allows you bring the power of motion graphics into Blender. So for those who have been thinking about working with procedural arrays, fields, fall off, text tools, animators, and so much more, you can now do all of this. Think about it like you being able to work with all of that cloners and effectors that you have in Cinema 4D inside of Blender, as this tool makes it extremely easy for you to start creating your motion graphic style stuff with Blender using the power of geometry nodes. And for those who like to get this, you can simply go over to the link in the description that will bring you right here where you'll be able to get this. Right now, this is doing a 25% offer. And for those who like to get even more motion graphic related stuff, the Mega MoGraph bundle is currently doing a 35% off. And this offers a good number of motion graphic style stuff that you will definitely love. And with that said, let's dive right into Blender and explore how this actually works. So with Blender simply open up right here, how you get things going is pretty simple. All you need to do is go over to edit, go over to preference right here within the preference, Go over to file part and within the asset library section, you need to click on the plus sign and locate the more graph toolbox folder and set it as the path. One thing which I would also recommend that you do is to set the import from pack to appended. And once you have that ready, you can click on the bugger menu, save your preference and close the window. Now if we drag out our new panel and we simply go over to our asset browser, you would notice that right here within the MoGraph toolbox that we've got a ton of things. Now this is very simple to work with as if you go ahead and expand this, you would notice that we've got the falloffs, the fields, material, presets from MoGraph preset to the text preset, all of these you can rework, use them, do whatever you want. They've been previewed for you to work with. The text seems to be coming soon with more features, but right here we've got tools and of course we also have utilities. Now for you to start making stuff is this easy. So think about it like this. By default, when you're working with tools like Cinema 4D, you get to work with cloners. And for that, the more graph array is actually what you need. So we can simply drag and drop this right here. And automatically, you now notice that we've got a cloner based off the cube that we were working with. So if you have any other objects in there, and you click and drag the MoGraph array into that, you would also notice that we have that as well. And in this case, since we have our cube, what we can do is to simply go over to our modifier section. And from here, we can start doing stuff. By default, this offers gizmo handles, which you can use to do things like expanding how much distance that you want in case you like to offset this, how much of them you like to do. If you like to scale, how much you would like to scale based off different axes. And on the other hand, if you like to increase the number of cubes or the number of cloners that you have, you can also go ahead and do that. You've got different kinds of array methods. So right here, we've got line, we've got grid, we have circle, then you also have mesh surface. And this is really good if you already have a mesh. So possibly you like to scatter based on a surface, you can actually go ahead and do that. Other things that you also notice when you're working with a mesh surface is you can literally select how you like this to be scattered, which again is pretty nice. Another mode which you also have here is the curve mode. And by default, transform options are available on all of the modes that are currently here. Some other interesting things that you might also want to know is you can instance different objects. So if there's a specific object that you like to use as an instance, you can use that. And if you do have collections, you can also use the collection section to do that as well. And how you can animate these is pretty simple. So in this case, we do have our circular array. We have a ring amount of one. We can increase that if we want. And of course, we can go ahead and reduce that. Make that two. And we're going to go ahead and throw in the MoGraph animator. By throwing that in, you do have a geometry node right here that allows you to animate these based off position, rotation, and skill. Which means you can set the minimum and maximum points that you like either the translation, rotation, or skill to have on the elements that you're animating. Now, if you like to increase the transition time, you can set that right here by setting these to maybe 0.5. That is the speed multiplier and you can see that it travels a bit slower. The same thing can be said for the rotation as you can also go ahead and set the rotation depending on what you're trying to get. And you can also do the same thing for skill as well. Now, in the same vein, we also have the randomize. Now, within the randomize section, you can choose to randomize the position, rotation, and scale of the MoGraph elements that you're working with. This is going to randomize based off the minimum and maximum value that you attach to it. It's also worth mentioning that you can choose to mix this up with the MoGraph Wrangler. And with the MoGraph Wrangler, you can even get more wrangling and also more distribution across your motion graphic elements, making it easier for you to actually create some very interesting looking stuff pretty quickly. 
Now let's talk about different kinds of effectors that exist with the MoGraph toolbox. And for you to actually get that going is pretty simple. So by default, if you simply push this all the way up, if you're using the line array mode, you would notice that this, you know, translates all the way up. And of course, we can also do the same thing with this. But if we would like to control this with motion graphics, or if we would like to control this with the MoGraph toolbox, we can easily do that by simply using fields and a simple fall off. Now for the fields, what we will need is a field transform. So I can simply click, drag and drop this right into our viewport. And you would notice that we already have something going. Right here, it's demanding for a custom object, which is an empty that we created before. So I'm simply going to click right here, go over to that empty and add it. Now, even if I have this empty selected and I move this left and right, you possibly would not notice anything different. So if I have that selected as well, and I choose to increase the scale, for example, and I pick this up and move this left and right, again, you possibly wouldn't notice anything. And that is because we don't really have a fall off that controls that. And to create that fall off is very simple. So we're simply going to go over to the fall off section and you can choose to use the spherical or the linear. In this case, we're simply going to bring the linear, click and drop that right there. And once we do that and have the cube selected, if we scroll all the way down, you now see that we've got a linear effector that has been added. We can click, go all the way to where we have our empty, drop that in, and you'd now notice that we've got this gigantic stuff, which is more like the radius. So we can drop that radius down, for example. Once we have this selected, which is the empty, then that controls the effector. If we push this left to right, you'd now notice that we have this animating, which is really good. So there's just a ton of things that you can now do moving forward. So for example, we can have this selected and go all the way to where we have our rotation. Possibly we like this to rotate at a certain angle once this starts moving. And again, if we have this selected and we start moving, you would notice that our rotation starts happening as well. The same thing can also be said for translation. So if we like this to simply translate a little bit upwards, maybe about a point like so, if we have this selected and we push through, you would now notice that we have that happening as well. Now, this is not the only thing that you can do with that. If you go to the fields, you would also notice that we have other things. We've got the field randomize, and this means that we can click, drag and drop onto our cube. And once we have that selected, if we go over here, you would notice that we have it right here. Possibly you like to randomize various stuff. Of course you can. To keep things a bit clean and nicely tidy, we're simply going to move the random all the way to the top and leave the linear down here. So if we like to make that randomization like we did earlier, we can. Say maybe we would like to make some randomization towards the X axis, the Y axis, the Z axis of the rotation. Possibly we like to do the same thing for the scaling. We can now have that happening. So once we have the effector selected and we move through, you would now see that we're creating some interesting stuff with this. Of course, you can also do the same thing for position. So once we have that selected and we move left and right, you would now notice that it randomly selects which of the positions that works for our MoGraph element. Of course, there are also cool ones like the push apart and also the target. Now for the target, once you have the target turned on, you can choose a specific target that you like. So for this case, we will just go in and bring our usual culprit, which is Suzanne. So once we have that, we can go over here and choose a target. Now the target that we want is Suzanne, and I'm just gonna make sure that it is that, and we can have the selected and once you start pushing a path, you see it translates upwards towards, you know, Suzanne. Now, if you don't have any target turned on, what this will do is it's just going to target the negative or the positive of any of the axes that you turn on. So if I select the Y axis plus and we have this selected and we push a path, you would notice that the rotation or the way it moves is slightly different. If we have that and we set this to the Z axis, if we have the effector selected and push around, you'd also notice that the way it behaves is totally different. So you do have all of these and you can now start creating cool stuff with them. Interestingly, if you're also thinking about exploring most of the options that they have here, then you might want to consider looking at their presets. So they do have a good number of presets right here. They can get you going and these presets can be useful as you can simply go into each of them and see the nitty gritties that mix up this preset and explore them and of course see how these things have been built and you can now use them as templates which you can work with depending on what you're trying to create and one cool thing with most of the presets that you have here is they're already animated which means that you can actually just go in and replace whatever you want so in a simple example like this one where we have a text we can go in there and change the string to subscribe 
and this is for those who haven't subscribed to the channel so you can actually change that to it and if you press the playback button you would now notice that we have that happening which is really really good in terms of materials there's already a material node here and you'd also find a couple of cool utility nodes as well which you can use to do stuff from curve to mesh grease pencil to curve object to instance text on a curve and also mesh to curve all of these alongside all the beautiful tools that you have here which includes the more graph connector for adding those interesting connector lines across your entire motion graphic elements and of course the more graph text tool which we've just simply demoed all come together to help you get that interesting motion graphic experience right here in blender so this is it for those who like to take a look at this you can simply go over to the link in the description where you can check it out and of course you can now explore all of these and start doing some cool stuff i believe there's a coupon code alongside a couple of cool links which i'm going to put in the description and of course a huge shout out to southern shorty for making this possible tell me what you guys think about this one in the comment section and i'd like to see you guys in the next one peace